So I just add this final drive and I'm ready to use this complete NAS system with 32 terabytes of storage in under an hour. It's very easy to do. But there are a few pitfalls along the way. So let's look at how anyone, even without tech skills, can set something like this up. And it all starts with buying the right stuff. So, do you need a NAS? Probably, if you're storing more than the normal amount of videos and photos, it's probably cheaper than a cloud service. Or if you want to ditch third parties altogether and have more control over your own data. Or perhaps if you're tired of juggling loose USB drives like their Infinity Stones. Now that you know that you want one, it's all about getting the right setup. And especially if you're a beginner, there are some products out there that make it especially idiot proof. I like the Synology brand for its ease of use and customizability, but now I've stumbled upon this new one. Let me tell you something, you don't expect setting up a NAS to fill this well, chill. It's a Ugreen DXP2800. From the moment you open the box, there's a quiet confidence to the DXP2800. The unit itself looks compact, well built and sleek enough to sit proudly next to your router instead of hiding behind a cabinet like it's done something shameful. Taking off the front panel is weirdly satisfying. It clicks into place so it just lifts cleanly without any screwdriver chaos. Inside those drive bays are neatly arranged and everything feels intuitive. You don't need to read the manual just to figure out how to insert a drive. And that's the easy first step, installing said drives. But this is the first thing most NAS newbies get wrong because size does matter. Not only do you want enough to get you by, and this totally depends on your use case of course, but you definitely want the same amount of storage for each drive. The golden rule is to use the same size for every bay. You could use the same drives for each bay, but you'd be wrong. So wrong. That's error number two. You see, drives of the same make and model, and especially if you buy them from the same batch, work the same as well. This means they vibrate in the same way, potentially leading to problems. And the chance of them dying at the exact same time, and thus losing redundancy and perhaps all your data, is a lot higher when buying the exact same drive for each bay. That's why you don't want the same brands, and about these four different ones, well also to test them out. But you do want the same drive sizes, and here's why. You see, a NAS often uses RAID, or a redundant array of independent disks. This creates a pool of multiple hard drives that makes sure that no data is lost if one fails. So when you have new data, the RAID distributes it across the drives automatically, so if one drowns, there's still one left with the data. But they can all only contribute as much to the team as the weakest swimmer, even if one is larger. Then they start swimming. Some will go faster and some slower. But the data transfer is only complete when they all reach the other end. So the redundant array of dry swimmers is only as fast as the slowest one. I hope, this explain, I, I hope this explained it a bit and you have different levels of redundancy that you can choose. But don't worry, I'll explain everything about the RAID level 5 that we're going to choose in the setup stage. Personally, I went with a set of 8TB drives, the Seagate Skyhawk, the Barracuda, the Western Digital Blue and the Toshiba N300. You can buy any that you like knowing that you'll get the speed of the slowest one. It's generally best to get a NAS optimized hard drive like the Toshiba N300 and I think the Western Digital blue is a little bit too slow for this. But I'll link to each of these in the description. This video isn't sponsored by any of these brands, but they are affiliate links of course. Now you might be thinking, okay I've got the drives all the same size, do I just plug them in and go? Pretty much yeah, but what makes a NAS truly fly isn't just what you put in the base, it's what you sneak into the cache. And this is error number three. Not using the SSD card slots in the correct way. And this Ugreen NAS is perfect because it also comes with two SSD card slots. Now some use this to add extra storage to the pool, but this is madness. Don't make the mistake of using SSDs for your storage because they are insanely expensive. Instead, use them in another way. So here's the part where you turn your NAS from just functional into ridiculously fast. SSD caching is like slipping a nitrous canister into your storage system. The SSDs are all about caching, speeding up the process of reading and writing to the pool. In simple terms, write cache gives you a fast buffer so moving your files over is as fast as the SSD will allow, not limiting you to the slower HDDs. Now here's the fun twist, you don't need massive SSDs. So I chose a single 2TB Western Digital Black Gen 4 PCIe with 7 gigs per second reading and writing speed. 
Read cache stores frequently accessed data so your NAS doesn't have to go diving in the deep end of the pool every time you want something. It's like keeping your house keys by the door instead of buried under a mountain of socks. And the Ugreen has a cool trick up its sleeve with intelligent caching. So let's take a look at all this in the setup. So this is the other part where a good NAS device will help. I like the Synology Bay, but I have to say, if you're worried about opening the interface, fully prepared to be attacked by drop downs, port forwarding and weird firewall warnings, this Ugreen is definitely for you. When opening the interface for the first time, I got a clean, pleasant panel that just calmly held my hand through everything like some kind of wizard's assistant. The app detects your NAS instantly if you're on the same network. You click in and it actually speaks human. No Linux terminal, no IP address incantations. You name your server and create your admin account and it walks you through RAID configuration like it's teaching you how to make toast. Now RAID might sound like something out of a tactical RPG but here it's just an illustrated little explainer. It even warns you if you're doing something silly like mixing drive sizes that will waste space. It nudges you towards smart choices, shows you exactly what kind of fault tolerance you'll get and then offers to optimize it for you. Genuinely it felt like the device was saying I got you. Now we're going for RAID 5 here, which means that every bit of data is stored on two drives. And if one fails, you still have all of your things on another. You could also go for RAID 6 and always have two drives that could fail at the same time without you losing anything. But I think this takes it a little too far and would also cost a lot of space we paid so dearly for when buying the four 8 terabyte hard drives. Now once you hit confirm, it formats the drive, sets everything up and you're in. It took me less time to get this running than it does to update my PlayStation and unlike most tech setups I didn't have to google a single thing. And you can access everything from the cloud online or in your folders on your computer. I went from brand new NAS to personal data center in about 20 minutes and honestly that's faster than it took Frodo to decide to leave the Shire. Now let's talk about the part that people usually dread and that's maintenance. Now don't worry this isn't a device that breaks down constantly or sends you passive aggressive notifications that you really don't want. It's surprisingly chill. The Ugreen OS actually makes regular updates updates a breeze. You'll get notified when new firmware is out and you can install it within a few clicks. I recommend turning on scheduled reboots once a week just to give the system a clean slate now and then. It's the digital version of stretching your legs after a long car ride. Temperature monitoring, drive health checks, memory usage, everything is laid out in the dashboard. Clear as day. And the smart alerts are actually useful. No cryptic error 498-BX messages, just plain English like hey this drive might be failing soon or your cache SSD is getting full. The kind of transparency that makes you feel like you're in charge, not just along for the ride. And speaking of drives, remember to check in on your HDDs once a month. Run a smart test, listen for any weird sounds and make sure your temperatures aren't getting to Mordor levels. But here's the best part, once you set it up it kind of runs itself. You check in every now and then, do some light house cleaning and maybe update a few things. But otherwise it just works, quietly, reliably and efficiently like Jarvis if you were built on a Windows cloud. The Ugreen DXP2800 turns what basically was a weekend long headache of setting things up into a one hour breeze and it's been a lifesaver for all of my video footage. Oh and check out one of these videos for more tech tips.